Okay, so today in this video, we finna talk about CPI and how it affects the stock market, right? So the consumer price index is um, how inflation is measured. So each month a reading comes out and it's basically telling us the CPI from the previous month. So since it's January 12th right now, we reading CPI data from December. So the reading came out and it was the highest that it had been. It was the highest year over year, so 12 month reading in over 40 years, right? So this is what we're looking at right here. And you can see it breaking out. If you go look at it on a, since, you know, the fifties or whatever, it's, it's steadily increased. So typically you, the Fed target a 2% inflation, right? So they want stuff to go up at like a 2% rate. We talking about 7% this year. So you can see how on this long-term basis, I mean, you can even see that inflection higher, right? You can see that kind of going up, the slope increased a lot more than what it had been before. This was the 2008 financial crisis. <clears throat> so this is where we at right now, right? And here, is, here it is zoomed in over the past 20 years. So back in July of last year, everybody thought inflation had peaked. And if we go to the stock market, this is the banking sector, right? This is the banking ETF. Look at what the banks did in June and July of 2021. They sold off, right? Because everybody think inflation peaked because that was a story. Remember the whole transitory thing. I was not fooled. So we look at Bitcoin back in July. Look what happened. It skyrocketed right it's simple <clears throat> bitcoin is not the inflation hedge that even i had started to believe that it was but you recognize patterns and you know when to get out and get into trades and this is why i say that it is very dangerous to just assume that this is the bottom for bitcoin you had a little cute little bounce today we'll see where it goes we're sitting at around forty-four thousand right now I don't see it going too much further. Ethereum, I thought might have had room to 3,600 once it bounced. This was a level that I already had plotted, uh, but I got like a million levels. I honestly can't tell you where it's gonna bounce at, but I do believe that Ethereum might go back down to around 1750. That's just my belief based off where rates are clearly headed, where inflation is clearly headed. Um, I still don't believe that it has peaked I think it's probably gonna get worse from here. I think inflation has become entrenched in people's pricing models. And that's something Brother Jay Powell talked about yesterday, trying to ensure that it does not get entrenched. So what do people do to, I mean, what does the Fed do to, stop inflation? We talked about it in the previous video. They have to raise rates. Notice how rates are historically low, insanely low, crazy low. They have to raise them. This is where rates were before the pandemic, right? So we got to get them somewhat, we got to somewhat normalize. We ain't even, we ain't nowhere, right? So, yesterday also we talked about the Fed's balance sheet. Look where it is. It's taking off. They talking about balance sheet runoff now. JP Morgan is saying that they're going to do twice the pace of what they did up in here in that 2018 time frame. And I will take you right back to it again. 2018 time frame. Look what Bitcoin did. That balance sheet start running off. Bitcoin start crashing. So don't let somebody just tell you this is the bottom just because it sold off so much. You have to, as an investor and as a trader, remember that just because something got cheap does not mean it can't get cheaper. So you look at stocks, look at something 
Look at how this performed today. Look how Nucor performed today. Nice performance, right? I keep talking about Nucor. Banks, pretty muted. They got earnings coming up. I feel like a lot of this run was because of earnings anticipation and because of yields had been rising. So I'm not surprised to see them stalling out. Morgan Stanley, the bank that I keep saying I'm watching the most, right? I really like Morgan Stanley, asset more of an asset management side of the banking industry, right? Bearish and golfing today. I can see this pulling back and going sub 100. I like it up in this 94 to, I'll say 99 range. I'm um, looking to buy contracts and buy shares, right? So that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking at. So when we talking about rates going up, rates going higher, you got to think about value stocks. You can't think about those tech stocks. Look at ARC. Looks horrible. Like I said, I just had bad timing on my short entry. I don't know what possessed me to take a swing entry when we were breaking lows after a pretty bad sell -off. I don't know why I did that. That was just bad. That was FOMO, to be honest. It was FOMO. Like I said in my other video, these anchor VWAPs, DocuSign was going to have trouble with 147. I could have shorted it today, but I just didn't really feel like shorting anything right now. Uh, I, I think stuff could just randomly bounce. The market could be overly bullish. People could get greedy. Look at QQQ. I called three, 380, 389, or what did I say? 386. Yeah, 386, 390 were the two levels I was watching for a top. When, when QQQ comes back to test this trend line, it's probably going to flush it. It's probably going to break it. I think now would be a good time to start positioning for short entries. Um, I want to wait until the end of the week before I start taking more short entries, just because with a, a you had a bullish week so far, um, you could see some more momentum to the upside. Stuff could push to test higher levels. I want arc right up in here in this downtrend before I take it again. I knew it would have trouble with eighty nine. Not surprised to see that. Uh, like I said, with QQQ, I will be waiting for this to flush this trend line. And again, this trend line goes back to, was it 2020? Yeah, November of 2020. Every time it's bouncing, nice clean bounces. Not this time. You see, we got the anchor VWAP from the May 2021 lows. That's what's holding it up right now. I don't think that holds too much longer. Technology stocks are going to struggle. Stocks that do not produce earnings that's trading at 100 times revenue, 50 times revenue, they're going to struggle. Uh, something else that I'm looking at is this double top on Home Depot. You break below 379, you got a good scalping opportunity. I don't know how far I would imagine it falls. I, mean, I think it, it at least fills that little gap it got right there. So that's a nice five point move uh, for a scalping opportunity. Um, you look at XLE, it's been going crazy, outperforming. Stocks that, stocks that pay dividends, think about it like that. Stocks that pay dividends have been performing really well so far, year to date. So if we take a look at Finviz and we go to groups and we look at year to date relative performance, energy, financials, basic materials, those stocks pay dividends. They those safer stocks, energy, financials, materials. Materials haven't broken out yet. Notice I keep talking about Nucor. I think I think Nucor and Cleveland Cliffs have a long way to run. Cleveland Cliffs just broke a. I called a 21.7 bounce yesterday. Uh, I got in to some January 28th calls that I took profit on right at 22.9 today. It was about 69% profit. I ain't lying, it really was. So you break out, you break this downtrend, you rip higher, you come back, retest it, you start bouncing. I got right back into some, uh, where did I get into? 
I got back into some shorter term call options. I took the took the January twenty first twenty three strike, right? So I think we got room back up to twenty four point five. You talking about breaking this downtrend? It it makes sense that it goes back to test highs. So we'll be looking to take profit. Uh, probably rated at like twenty four point two five. I'm not worried about a, another 25 cent move. So I got some contracts that I am holding still uh, that I do plan on executing if we can get up here and test 26.5. It's either that or I'll execute some of my new core contracts. Keep talking about it, right? So Apache breaking out also. Uh, I'm mean, I can see that continuing tomorrow. JP Morgan, I'm not exactly long term, you know, I want to pick this out the crowd type of um, bullish, but I think it does make a move higher tomorrow. And if I'm not mistaken, they report earnings Friday. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Friday. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, what? Thursday. Oh, yeah. It's definitely making a move higher. It's already started to run up into earnings. It's probably going to keep running up into earnings. Um, it's probably going to sell off after earnings. Same thing for Morgan Stanley. Volatility starts to pick up. Oh, they report earnings on the 19th. Oh, yeah, so I would definitely be interested in a pullback because this hasn't ran entirely too far since the, towards the end of December. What do we have? was up 12 percent it's currently up nine percent so i mean i guess it did make a pretty decent run but i mean pullback is definitely in it inevitable at this point yeah you got a bearish and golf in there yeah so i mean this has at least another day of pulling back and we'll see how ugly tomorrow is but that's pretty much what's going on inflation hot it ain't going nowhere for a long time until the fed do something about it and that's just how it is. And I would just say continue to stay in um, those boring stocks. I like Target under 220. We get back down to 211. That would be perfect. I like the Cheesecake Factory. Looks like we're about to flush this level here. But uh, it's a good reopening play, in my opinion. If we can break this downtrend, you got support here. You got some support up in here. And you had some support for my 05, right? So this 2017 support, let me let me put on the monthly so you can see it. That go to that 2006 resistance area, right? That is now support. You see it just hovering at these levels. So it's at a key level right now. If we break, uh, I guess we're probably going somewhere towards 28.7. That's what I would assume or maybe 32.5, but we got some support up in here also from 2020 going into 2021. So I guess, yeah, this reversed all of 2021's gains so far. And I mean, we right back at, yeah, we right back at pre-pandemic prices. So, I mean, I could, I don't know why I would be exactly insanely bullish on. I don't really I guess people go to Cheesecake Factory. But if it break this downtrend, it break this downtrend. I think it would have room back up to 64. Last time I called something like that, Micron. I made a TikTok video about it. Like when it was like 74 or something like that, right up in here. Don't know why I didn't just swing it higher. I think I I think I got like 10% on some. I took some March swings and I took profit at like 10%. Something stupid that I did. I wasn't, I just wasn't even thinking. But I'm still waiting for this to break out. Uh, that's right there testing the dot com bubble highs. So that's why I have some trouble breaking that, of course. I think we see one decent sized pullback here, at least a correction. Uh, so if we can go 10% from this 98.5 level. Yeah, that puts us right back at a retest. <clears throat> I like it under 90. 
I definitely like under 90. If we can get it closer to 80, that's even better. I did buy a couple shares up in here somewhere, but I plan on buying a bunch more if we can get lower. Um, so value stocks, definitely. The only technology I like is semiconductors. I came in this year thinking that um, EVs would do really well. We'll see if they can break this downtrend that they have. I know ChargePoint had broken its trend line that it had there. So I kind of got it colored red on the outline now. Neo hadn't broke. I mean, I don't know how those, I don't know how EVs will do. I think Tesla had been up. I was up today too. Held up pretty well close, close near highs. So it's just stuff like that. Just find the boring stocks. And if you can play technology, find a theme that will work. I only even bring up EVs because of the Build Back Better plan. If that does pass, then you have a theme that could possibly work as long as rates not rising at some crazy pace. But even with rates rising, you got something like Cleveland Cliffs or Nucor that's going to do really well if that Build Back Better plan passes. So that is where I like to be the absolute most right now at these prices. And I don't mind taking XLF on a breakout and I don't mind Morgan Stanley on a pullback, but my highest priority right now is Nucor. I think this will break out beyond 125, beyond 130, and push for probably 140, 150s. We'll see where it goes. So appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Join the Discord at investorsanonymous.net and follow the Instagram at six fat daddy nine. Post a lot of content. Uh, got an educational course as well available on the website at investorsanonymous.net. So appreciate y'all and I'll see y'all for the next video.